What's up, y'all? It is your girl, Sarah from Sarah Styles here. I have been thrifting since I was a very little girl. And my mom taught me, we kind of have a process and we go through and we get everything that we think we might want and end up with carts that look like this. And then we find a quiet spot and we go through everything. If it's for me personally, try things on. If I'm selling it, you know, look and make sure that there's no stains and there is no holes and look up comps if I need to. Do you guys do this process? Um, it's what I've always done and what my mom taught me, but I'm curious to know what your guys' process is as well. In today's video, I am going to show you the items that I got for my latest haul, as well as walk you through that process and how I decide what I'm actually going to pick up. So I start with a cart that looks like this, and I end up with a cart that looks like this to sell and make money on Poshmark and eBay. If you want to learn how to source at thrift stores to resell on Poshmark and eBay, make sure to hit that subscribe and notifications and stay tuned. On this thrifting haul, I went to two different thrift stores, spent roughly around around three hours between the two stores and ended up with like 47 pairs of shoes, uh, 20 pairs of jeans. I think it was 67 items all together. I forgot I was going to do a haul video, <laughs> so I've already listed some of it, um, but the rest of it is all behind me. Shoes, purses, some jeans, bathing suits, all of that. Before we get into the actual items that I purchased, I want to show you a little bit about what I do before I even go to a thrift store. So this chart is a simulator. It is in the sales and trends dashboard. I will link a video to that up here above so you can learn more about this. But this is all based off of my data. You can see up here, I am saying I want to gross $9,000 a month. You can enter in whatever money that you want is going to look at your data and tell you exactly what you need to know, what you need to do to hit that money, to hit that monetary goal, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Um, it is going to tell you exactly what you need to do to hit that monetary goal. And so over here, you can look at the chart and it gives you based off of my sell through rate, based off of the items that I'm picking up and the access that I have, this is exactly what I need to do. My average sale price needs to be $31 to $36. The higher my average sale price, the less items that I have to sell because I'm selling higher price items. So when I am outsourcing, I am thinking of that average sale price. I need to hit a certain sell through. I need to buy items that have a good sell through rate, items that I know are going to sell. And I'll get to that in a minute. And then I also need to buy items that are at this average sale price. I am not going to hit the, my goal and your goal can be whatever that you want to put in this. It can be, you know, I want to pay my car payment to, I want to pay my mortgage every month, but have a goal and look at your data to help you decide where you want, where you need to be with that. I go sourcing and I don't pick up things that aren't going to hit this goal and what the simulator is telling me. And then I go one step further and I look at this chart, which is my top 20 categories. This these are the categories that are bringing me the highest gross revenue based off of my data. I don't need to look at other people's comps. I don't need to see what, you know, these resellers are finding all of these amazing bolo brands that I'm never going to find. This is based off of things that I'm selling right now and things that I am finding in my thrift stores and purchasing from my liquidation pallets. Top 20 gross revenue platforms. So you have your sell through rate here and your average sale price. And a quick review, if you're new to the channel, a sell through rate is going to be how many items you've sold out of how many items that you have for sale. So if you have 10 pairs of jeans for sale and you've sold five of them, you have a 50% sell through rate for that. 100% is ideal. You are selling everything that you have. So the higher the sell through rate, the better. Average sale price again is how many items you have. If you're selling things, how much they are selling for on average. You have a pair of jeans, one sells for $10, one sells for $20. Your jeans are selling for $15 on average. So, so up in this top right corner, that means my bolo, a high sell through rate, a high average sale price. And I'm going to tell you right now, these are not things that I normally pick up. <laughs> um, I did a little bit of consignment for my brother-in-law last year, electronics, 96% sell through rate, $61 average sale price. I should learn electronics. Home goods is up there as well. $82 average sell price. On average, these home goods were selling for $82 and my sell through rate, 68% of these items I purchased in the past year have already sold at on average an $82. I'll also give the caveat that my brother-in-law has been reselling for 12 years. So he knows what he's doing. Um, not all home goods are going to sell that. 
but obviously based off of this data, you can tell that he knows what he's doing. You come down here a little bit further down. Um, I do mostly women's clothing, shoes, and purses. My bags, bags are 69% sell through rate. 70% of the bags that I have purchased in the past year have sold through. I've sold them at an average sale price of $55. Jackets and coats. I'm going to say I'm filming this. Um, it is spring now, so I'm not really looking at jackets and coats, nor do most of my thrift stores even have jackets and coats out, but that's a great sell-through rate. It's a great average sale price. Sweaters is the same thing. A sell-through rate is good. My average sale price is high. Jeans. Jeans sell all year round. Not quite as much during the summer, but definitely all year round. Average sale price. That average sale price is at the low end of the average sale price that I want to be at, but it's still there. And my sell-through rate is 62%. That's a good sell-through rate for me. Focus on you. So my sell-through rate for all of last year was roughly like 52%. Any sell-through rate for the past year that's over my average is performing better than my average. Shoes again is at a sell-through rate, $59 or 59%, an average sell price of $35. So this is where my plan comes into place before I even get to a thrift store. Those are the categories that I go to. I don't look at these other places because that the inventory that I have available or the knowledge that I have available for those other categories just is not really it for me. And the other thing I'll say too is I do liquidation palettes and some of those other categories like tops and skirts, pants, stuff like that, they kind of come bundled in a liquidation palette anyway. So I am not buying any more of those type of categories than I have to because my data is not telling me that that is my strong suit and is not telling me that that is the stuff that is going to sell well for me. All right, so now let's see some items that I actually purchased. And if you guys are a returning viewer, please let me know how you guys are liking my new style. I'm trying to work on some editing um, and formatting the videos a little bit differently. So let me know down below what you guys think of these videos compared to some of my previous videos. Let's see what I got. So we will start with some clothing. Like I said, I accidentally started listing some of this stuff. Um, so it is going to be mostly shoes, but I found I like to start looking at the swimwear um, just to see what there is. This is a Michael Kors swimsuit. Um, and Michael Kors is kind of hit or miss. I figured because it is spring and it was really cute. It's an almost new condition that it was probably, um, I, I figured I would pick it up. Other thing I'm going to note too is you're seeing a weird shadow and I apologize. My kids are in bed. Um, it's kind of dark. It's at night. So it's a little bit dark. I'm working on lighting too. So you might see kind of a weird shadow. So I have a problem when I am sourcing. I look at the athletic wear for myself. I have a problem. It's like what I like to live in. So I do pick up things in the athletic wear if I see them. And you can see, I hope you guys can see that. You can see that Nike is, um, it's going to be a top brand for me. And let me show you how I know that. Um, in one of my charts, I'll show you guys this chart right here. That is categories. Let's look at brand performance. Nike, these are my, for the past year, my top performing brands. And you can see Nike is right here at a 69% sell-through rate, $27 average sale price. So for me, yes, that's a little bit below my $31, $30 $30 to $36 that I'm aiming for to hit my goals, but it has a really good sell-through rate and it's making me, it's one of my top gross revenue brands. And so I'm going to pick it up when I see it, when it's in good condition. On that note, you guys want to take a guess what brand this is? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. This is Nike again. These are, so on leggings, I always look at the crotch area. Um, I mean, there's other signs, but the crotch area is going to tell me um, if they are in good condition or not. If these were my size, I would have kept them, to be honest. I think I got two or three pairs for myself. And then these are all ones that are not my size. Um, Fabletics. So I'm going to be honest. I have a rule. I do an 80, 20 rule and 80% of things based off of my data strategic. You know, I only go to these categories. I only look up purses, shoes, and jeans when I am out thrifting and buy brands that I know are going to work for me. 20% of those, I'm going to venture out a little bit. I may say, Hey, I'm going to try hard goods a little bit more. Fabletics is not a brand that I've really tried before. I've bought two other leggings. They haven't listed yet, so I don't know how they're going to sell. Um, but I've kind of heard in the community that Fabletics sells well. And again, these 
are, you know, basically unworn. Um, let me know if you guys have luck with Fabletics. Someone told me the prints of Fabletics sell better. I don't know. Let me know down below. Again, athletic wear. This is Prana. So these will probably sell for like 10, 15 bucks maybe, but I liked them because they were a nice print. If they were like just a regular, you know, black leggings or something, I probably wouldn't have bought them. And again, I looked at the crotch and um, they have like have never been worn. So that is an indicator for me. Shorts are, um, let me show you my data. Though my shorts, and this is a year, so keep in mind some seasonality here, 63% sell through rate, $22 average sale price. And if we were going to just look at the summer months, my sell through rate is going to increase. So when I see shorts starting in the spring, I'm going to pick them up. These are, these are page. Just little cut off shorts. I do find that the style matters with shorts as well. Um, high rise is definitely in right now. So American Eagle is a brand that I'm kind of trying out. I've heard on social media that these high rise, super high rise, uh, super high rise jeans sell well. So I'm going to try some super high rise in the shorts as well. I do want to know as well the sizing. These are a size two. That's probably the smallest I'm going to go in unless it's like a super bolo brand or I know it's absolutely going to sell. Those zeros, even size two may sit for a little bit, um, but I figured it being spring at the very beginning of summer, I'll probably have some decent luck. Again, these are American Eagle as well. And these are also high rise. The distressed is still working. Um, I'm still selling distressed stuff, jeans, shorts, and all of that as well. And then another pair of American Eagle outfitters. I don't imagine these are going to sell very high, but I do think that they're going to sell a high sell through rate. So I don't mind going a little bit under my average sale price of that $30 if it's going to sell and it's going to make me some profit. Again, these are a high rise shorty. These are size eight. I was going to say, I wonder if it's all the same person who got rid of their stuff. So let's get into a little bit of shoes. Um, actually let's do some purses. <laughs> um, I love purses. I looked at the purses at both of the stores that I went to and it was kind of a bust. Um, I only got a couple purses, but I will show them to you. Um, so this is a brand that was new to me. I just looked at it and said, hey, that is really good quality. And I don't know, are you guys going to be able to read that? Um, it is Dyerder. I'm not going to even pretend to say this. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the brand. I looked up comps. It looks like vintage of this brand sold. I mean, some of the comps were like $200 and then some of the comps were $40. So I'm fine <laughs> with testing it out. 20%. I don't know this brand. Let's try it out. And then you also have a coach purse. What I like about this coach purse is they thought it was a fake because of the way that it was priced. So normally you have a coach purse and it's going to have a creed here. There was a couple years where they didn't do that and they actually tried to cut down on people making fakes. And so they actually sewed in the tag right here. Um, and so then, you know, they didn't price it super high because they thought it was a fake. And then you can also see the lining right here as well. This isn't a super high end coach. It's probably not going to sell for more than, you know, 30 to $50, but it's 30 to $50. I will absolutely take that. Now let's look at some shoes. Um, coach. Dun, 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 dun. So we have a coach factory outlet here, um, which we see these fairly often. These, I probably wouldn't have paid too much for them, but I did buy them. I think they were $5. My average cost of goods for the shoes that I purchased during this between the two thrift stores, they priced very similar was $5 and six cents for all of my shoes. That was my average cost of goods purses. My average cost of goods was $8 as well shorts was $5. So my average cost of goods for this whole trip for everything was, you know, around $5. And that's fairly normal for thrift store prices. I don't mind paying a little bit more because I can go directly to the shoes. I can go directly to the purses. I can go directly to the jeans. Yes, the bins are going to, you know, give you a little bit lower cost of goods, but it takes me more time to find enough things to sell because I can't go directly to these categories that I strategically plan on going to before I go to the thrift store. 
These are boring concepts, VOC. Um, they are, so something I look for in shoes is the condition, looking at the heels, have they been worn? And it looks like they've probably been worn, tried on. Like it does not even look like they have been worn one time. <gasps> Guys, I forgot a pair of pants. How did I forget to show you guys these shorts? These, this is one, this is not the um, big bolo that I'm going to share with you guys at the end, but this is like one of the more exciting finds and it is going to be, um, I'm not going to pretend to say it, but these, I looked them up and they probably retailed at like four or $500. So we'll see what the resale value for those are. These are Vince. You guys see that? Vince. And what's funny is I found one, two, three, I found four pairs of these shoes, the same style. Um, one was like suede. I have a couple others that I'll show you. And they were all, so I went on a sale day. So they were all half price except for one. So I didn't buy the one that wasn't half price because I wasn't going to pay up for them. Um, but I found quite a few pairs of these. I think they're great going into spring and then into summer. I didn't get too many boots, but I do kind of have a boot problem. I thought these were super cute. Vince Camuto, can you guys see that? Oh, let me see that, how's that one? No. It's Vince Camuto, I can't show you guys. Um, It's Vince Camuto, their issues are hit or miss unless they're really cute and these you can tell they look like they have never been worn I probably won't pick them up but those were really cute and they looked like they've never been worn this is I'm not going to say most of these brands because honestly I fumble over words <laughs> these again look like they have never been worn they do have a little bit of dirt right there um, but if you can see on those they look like they've never been worn that's always something that I look for in shoes really make sure again these look like they've never been worn this brand sesto muchi guys i'm terrible <laughs> um this brand i've have a couple of these and this is a brand that i can't stop buying they're made in italia italy guys it's late <laughs> bear with me um they're made in italy and they retail really high and sometimes the comps on these are really high and sometimes they sit in my closet for a while but i can't stop picking them up <laughs> Do you guys have a brand like that? Um, do you have brands that you just cannot stop picking up even though you know they're going to sit for you? Because you tell yourself, I know these are going to sell eventually and it's going to be worth it. These are Sperry. So I don't pick up Sperry a lot. I know a lot of people say it sells. Um, I haven't really had that experience to be honest and it usually sells low, but these were so cute. And look at the bottoms. Like they've never been worn. Um, so I thought I'd pick them up. It's spring into summer. I thought they would do really well. Here is a, again, Vince, um, another pair of those. These probably have a name to them. <laughs> um, Y'all, I don't list my own stuff. I have listers. I am a mom of three children and I am busy. So I do the shopping and I do the shipping, but I don't do the listing in between. So I'm really not good with knowing all of these names. Um, if you guys know what these type of shoes would be called, loafers probably, um, I'm sure they have like an other more specific name. These are the same. These are splendid. Um, I can't tell. This lighting is probably not the best, right? It's kind of hard for you guys to see. There we go. These are splendid. I'm leaning towards these being men's. Um, I'll have to look at the size and kind of see how they fit. But I'm leaning towards these being men's shoes, which I don't normally pick up men's. If I find men's, I'll buy it, but I don't specifically source for men's. These are, these were hit or miss. I wasn't sure if I was going to pick them up or not. They are KMB. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that. Can you see that? Yeah, there you go. Um, I had to look them up. I said, those look really nice. I've never heard of this brand. I don't know all the brands. Um, I know how to look at numbers and data and strategically shop and look up comps and run sales, but I don't know all the brands um, and I'm not gonna pretend like I do. So I looked up these, I looked up the comps and apparently these are an anthropology brand and the comps on them were pretty good. So I thought I'd try. And here is the third pair of Vince shoes. These ones are like a, can you see like a fur on them? Um, I don't know, I really like them. And they're all in really good shape. Um, these ones are Jeffrey Campbell. I do know those ones. 
these were probably i've sold some of jeffrey campbell's he's known a lot for like his really high platforms um and like really funky shoes so i don't know how these ones will do what do you guys think um i mean i'm sure they'll sell i'm thinking maybe 25 dollars. what do you think um i'll obviously look up comps and price them <laughs> when i list um these ones so i'm in colorado if you guys don't know if you're new to my channel Apparently we have good thrifting here, but our store is no brands and it is not, I posted on my Instagram, you know, two weeks ago, I went sourcing and I found a pair of Todd's shoes. They looked like they'd never been worn a pair of Todd's loafers and they were priced at $80. Um, so it is hard sometimes to find these nicer brands because you'll find them, but they aren't priced to be able to resell. Well, I love when you find a brand. Tory Burch. Um, and these were priced at $5. Uh, so obviously whoever was pricing that day was not aware of all the brands because normally this, these would have been priced significantly higher. So I was super excited to see that. Before we finish this haul and see the item that I found that retails over a thousand dollars, y'all. Like I was, and the first item that I found, I was so excited. Before I show you that and the rest of this haul, let me know what your guys' favorite thrift store find that you found recently was. Um, what have you guys been out there sourcing and what was your favorite find recently? When I'm out sourcing, I also will post on my Instagram stories and I do a lot of questions and polls like, hey, what do you guys think about this? I found this. And so I'm gonna show you one other thing that I do and how I actually, when I'm out sourcing, how I decide if it's something that I'm going to pick up or not. All right, so you can see here, this is a poll that I took on my Instagram stories. This was a pair of Uggs. They looked like they've never been worn, but they were priced at $13. 71% of you said that I should get it. 29% of you said that I should not. Um, so I look up in eBay, there used to be an app completely and it would give you sell through rate and it was pulling their data from eBay, but that app hasn't been working for a while. YouTube, eBay, I keep saying YouTube, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> eBay has said that they are going to put Terapeak onto the app, and I absolutely cannot wait for that. If you guys don't know Terapeak, I will link the video for my how to use Terapeak above. It is amazing. I love Terapeak. Um, but I go into eBay and I will just search for something, let's say the Ugg Flats recently searched for these. So these are all the Ugg flats that are currently for sale. You can see that top one, $21.99. That looks the most similar to one that I have, but these comps are all, you know, in the twenties. And so if I'm not going to pay $12 to sell something for $20. So that's how I decided when I had my big cart full of stuff and I dwindled down to what I was going to buy and what I was not going to buy. That's how I decided. So let's jump back in and finish this haul and figure, and I'll share with you guys at the very end of this amazing item. Y'all, I was so excited. I'm still excited. <laughs> Don't you love finding the, like, this is why we do this because we love the treasure hunting. So like I said, most of this is shoes, not because it's all that I picked up, but because I forgot to film this haul before I started listing some other things. Um, so I did get about 20 pairs of jeans as well and then i think some, a couple jackets so this is born um these born are going to be they're going to sell but again i look at the bottom and they have not been worn the toes if you look at the front of leather shoes the toes are in really good condition their clogs mules um are good i'm trying to get into sneakers a little bit more so if you guys watched my latest haul i tried a couple of pairs of sneakers i, I don't know exactly what I'm doing, to be honest. So if there are sneakers that you guys like to sell and that sell well for you, let me know down, down below. But I ultimately just look and look for shoes that do not look like they have been worn. And then I look up comps. These are called Vionic. Um, and the comps on them were pretty good and they look like they're in really good condition. So that's part of that 20%. You know, a lot of these brands I've sold, I know they're going to sell for me. I'm trying to learn sneakers and kind of see how they go. This brand is Minnetoka. And look at those. I mean, these have never been worn, like ever. I'll probably say new without tax. Um, so these are good. So I wear mostly minimal shoes. A lot of people in the barefoot, barefoot community like Minnetokas, basically because they're very flexible. So you feel like you're barefoot 
when you are wearing them. So if you find that brand and they look like that, um, you can put that in your listing. These are Sam Edelman's. This was also, I asked in my Instagram stories if I should get these or not. I don't normally pick up Sam Edelman. I liked that it was their fur and it is the animal print. And then look at this bottom. They look like they've hardly been worn. Womp womp. Um, I forgot to take a screenshot. I'm pretty sure it was 50-50 split between if I should buy them or not. And I decided to go ahead and pick those up. These are um, Jeep engineered. I've never actually bought this. I found quite a few of these. These were the ones that they were the cutest and in the best condition. Comps were only around like 20 bucks, but if they're going to sell and they're going to sell quickly, I decided I was going to pick up one of all of the ones that I bought, see how it does. Um, I see them fairly often. It seems to be a Colorado-ish brand. This brand, what is it? Technica? Um, so this brand is, I don't know the full backstory, so I'm not going to say it. Some of their shoes retail really, really, really high. And some of their shoes are made differently and don't retail quite as high. Um, I don't know the whole backstory, so I'm not going to tell you that, but I do know that. Some of them go really high and some of them don't. Um, but these are, you know, fur, and I've never actually seen them in this style. They're usually like um, Ugg type style boots with like lots of fur and all of that. But these are, look at the bottoms, basically unworn. The other reason that I look for bottoms like that too, is I don't like cleaning. <laughs> like honestly, I don't clean. Um, so I take the tags off and that's about all I'm, that I'm going to do. And so if they have a lot of work that needs to be done, I, I mean, I would do it if there was like a pair of Gucci shoes or something, but I'm not spending 20 minutes cleaning a pair of shoes that are going to sell for $20. Um, and I understand that I live in Colorado and I have that luxury to not have to do that. Um, so do what works for you. Obviously these are Vince. So there's Vince Camuto. Um, again, these are another pair. I don't always pick them up, but they don't look like they've been worn that much. Um, they're suede and in pretty good condition. The other thing that I'll look at too on these, if I'm, if I'm debating whether to pick them up is size. So these were a size eight, um, which is a pretty good size. They're probably going to sell pretty well. These are Earth Origins. I see these a lot in Colorado. They're not going to sell super high, but if they are in really good condition um, and seasonal, right? So these are going to be spring, summer type shoes, then I will definitely pick them up. Keds, I've seen a lot of these. And I know Keds is kind of like, you know, vintage and 80s, 90s, 90s, 2000s are coming back. Um, and so Keds are part of that. And I looked up comps, they were all over the place, but these, these are brand new. Um, I mean, they don't have the tag, but look at them. These are completely brand new. So I thought I would pick them up and see how kids did for me. Y'all, it would not be a thrift store haul from Colorado if I did not have this, the North Face. Um, I see a lot of this, but like I said, the brand, the thrift stores in Colorado price it really high. Oftentimes I will see it and I'll post it on my Instagram stories, um, but I don't always end up buying it because it's priced really high. These were priced at a reasonable price with the half off. Um, and again, they are, you know, I didn't have to clean them and they're virtually unworn. What's funny about these is I had a pair of these uh, two weeks ago, I think, and they've already sold. Um, so this is, like I said, Nike is one of my top brands, gross revenue. These, I think the ones that I sold, sold for like 18 or $22. So again, not that $35, but if they're going to sell in two weeks, then I will take that profit and turn that profit into more money, right? Are you guys ready to see that big below brand? Something that I, this is the first thing that I found. Um, I was going through the thrift store and I said, that looks like really nice leather. And lo and behold, it is Todd's. So I haven't found this exact one, but Todd's purses start at $1,000 and can go up from there. It is a very good size. <laughs> um, so I'm guessing it was more than $1,000. I'll look up at the comps. I've sold Todd's purses in the past and they sometimes they sell for $50 and sometimes they sell for like $125. Um, I've never had them sell like super high but especially for what they're retailed at. But it was a super exciting, great way to start the trip. So if you like this video, YouTube thinks that you're also going to like this video. 
I will link a playlist here if you guys like this video and learning how to make money reselling and learn how to strategically do this, whether you are a side hustle, part-time, full-time, whatever it is, use your, money, use your time and your money wisely, and then make sure to hit that subscribe button.